Okay, so in this video is going to be a super quick breakdown of all the equations you need to understand, be able to rearrange, etc. for the amount of substance topic within AQA A-level chemistry. Now this video is going to tell you everything you need to know so you don't have to worry about did I miss an equation here, did I miss an equation there. Just learn these equations, do past paper questions for them, get used to using them, rearranging them. So let's jump into the easiest ones first off, it's just going to be our molar equations. So you should know these off by heart, n equals m over mr, our moles here, moles equals uh, mass, mass of or whichever substance we're looking at, and then mr is our molar mass here molar mass all right and um, so let's look at the units here so that's just mole mass in chemistry is in grams uh, excluding certain uh, topics for example with the time of flight mass spec and uh, this is in kilograms it's always important to be aware of um, next is our molar mass and this is just in grams per mole okay so super quick breakdown of that you should know this a very fundamental equation. Next up is our N, our moles again, equals CV, okay? Concentration times volume. So then uh, let's write this as conch and volume. Now, primarily in chemistry, the units of concentration is going to be in moles per decimeter cubed, and our volume is simply going to be decimeters cubed. Now, in the question, this is normally given in centimeters cubed. So we have some conversion rate on here, but we have to divide by a thousand. So this is super basic stuff. You should have used these in GCSE. Um, and then what we can do is we can just build upon them and apply these equations in more complex questions. Okay, then next up is our number of particles. So sometimes we're asked to say how many uh, particles or ions or molecules or whatever it may be of a specific substance there are. So the equation for that is going to be our number of particles. I'm just going to call that um, large n here. Um, don't get this confused, I'll explain this in a second. So number of particles is simply going to equal our moles. So the moles of the substance we're focused on. Um, let's say for example it was chloride ions, whatever it may be, moles of that, multiplied by our Avogadro's constant. Avogadro's constant. All right, so um, units of this, it's just going to be mole again, always mole. Um, Avogadro's constant, um, this is um, not going to have units really, but it's a fixed constant, so it's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Now this doesn't you don't need to remember this, always given to the exam, uh, but it's useful to know this equation so that we can rearrange it. Okay, so the way I remember it is just our capital N, our number of particles, equals our moles, lowercase n, multiplied by Avogadro's constant, which is normally given to us as an L. Now sometimes you'll see Avogadro's constant written as N with a capital A below it, um, but for this case of AQA, it should normally be an L. All right, then next up is mass concentration. Now you don't see this one too often, but it's useful to be aware of it. Now, the concentration of a solution um, can be measured in terms of the mass of the solute per the volume of solution, okay? So it's kind of a weird one, you don't often see it, but um, it's going to be mass uh, concentration equals, this is going to be our mass over volume, okay? so. If we look at our units here, very easy breakdown. Mass, again, is going to be grams. Our volume is going to be decimeters cubed. Therefore, the, the units of our mass concentration then is just simply going to be grams per decimeter cubed if we stick these two together like that. Now, you'll see this in a question whereby they give us the concentration or you have to calculate the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. And then we have to convert those units into the mass concentration in grams per decimeter cubed. So what do we do then? So all we have to do is multiply the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed by the MR. So let's let's look at that quickly. So if we have our um, concentration in grams per decimeter cubed, um, which is which is simply going to be our mass concentration, this is going to equal our concentration that we were either given or calculated concentration in moles per decimeter cubed, which is our usual standard for a solution, this is going to be multiplied by our MR right here, which we have the units of uh, grams, uh, uh, grams per mole here. So what happens is we have, um, if we look at this quickly, we have moles um, per decimeter cubed 
multiplied by grams per mole. The two moles simply cancel, and then we're left with grams per decimeter cubed, okay? So hopefully that's not too complicated. Uh, you won't see this too often, but it's very useful to be aware of because normally it's like a two, three mark question where we just have to convert some units. Um, but if you remember this, it's gonna save you some precious time in your exam. All right, next up, everyone's favorite, easy five, six mark questions, love it. PV equals NRT. This is our ideal gas equation, as you should know. So this is pressure here, pressure, and then we'll go through the units in a second. This is volume. This is going to be our moles right here. This is going to be our gas constant, cheeky R. All right. And this is our temperature. Now let's go through the units quickly. Our pressure is always going to be in pascals. Now in the question, they're normally going to provide it in kilopascals just to trick you out. Um, but always convert this from kilopascal into pascal. Okay, just times by a thousand. Next up, volume. This is a unique one to ideal gas, meters cubed, right? Earlier we showed that the standard for uh, volume in chemistry is decimeters cubed. Forget that here, we want it in meters cubed, all right? So again, you have to divide by a thousand. And if we're giving it to the standard, um, normally our apparatus are in centimeters cubed, we can actually have to divide it by a million. So 10 to the minus six, okay? Same thing there. Just remember the meters cubed, you should be all good to go. Now, uh, moles, easy, mole is just always the standard there. Gas constant, now this is, you don't need to know this because it's always given to you in the exam, but it's very useful to remember the units in terms of energy um, because later on when you get to uh, Arrhenius and things like this, you'll need to be aware of the joules per Kelvin per mole, okay? But for now, it's not too important because we don't have, have any other uh, energy um, variables present. Next up, temperature is going to be Kelvin. So if we're always, if we're given degrees Celsius, you just chuck on 273 there, easy peasy. Now then, here's quite an interesting one that you don't see too often, is when we have to calculate dilutions. So essentially when we when we add a, a ton of distilled or deionized water to, to some sort of solution here. Now, if we dilute a solution, it's not actually going to change the amount of moles of, of the substance present. However, the volume is going to increase. Um, so if we have our concentration, uh, sorry, N equals CV, we rearrange this now to be C equals N over V. If we, uh, if our moles are left the same, because we're not, we're not changing anything regarding our moles of substance, all we're doing is adding in distilled water, okay? But our volume is going to increase. Therefore, because that's at the bottom of the fraction, our concentration then is going to decrease naturally. So maybe there's, they'll chuck in a one or two marker asking what will happen to the concentration when you dilute it. Uh, you may think it's common sense to just think it decreases, but that's a little explanation there. Now, we actually have an equation for this to work out the diluted concentration. So normally what they do is they give you the initial concentration and then they'll tell you, okay, we added this amount of distilled water. What is the new concentration of the diluted substance? So then that's just going to be our... Um, diluted conk, our diluted concentration, it's going to equal our concentration, uh, I'm going to call that concentration initial, multiplied by, now what we have to do is just have our original volume, so I'm going to call this uh, volume initial, volume initial, over our new volume, okay, or our final volume, or our diluted volume, so dilute volume, all right, so if we remember this, rearrange it as needed. Maybe they'll throw in some weird question where they'll ask you one of these variables. So they may, you may already get given this one, given this one, or given this one or something in there. You wanna know what the initial volume is or something. Um, but yeah, remember this, rearrange as needed. The uh, units stay exactly the same. So concentration is just going to be in moles per decimeter cubed, volume, decimeter cubed, etc. Get used to using those standards. Now then, we looked at the PV equals NRT ideal gas equation. Um, whereby normally when we're answering the question, we're going to have constant conditions. So the pressure, temperature, etc., are fixed. Uh, they're fixed values. But sometimes they may um, give you some sort of data and then say, actually, these are all switched up. We changed it from this temperature, this pressure to something else. What do we have to do here? So if we have a gas in the ideal gas equation and we change the conditions, uh, changed conditions of gas, um, this is what we would have to do, okay? So what we can look at simply is um, 
let's let's just look at our previous equation so pv equals nrt now if we change our conditions here what is changing so our pressure can change our volume can change and our temperature can change however the moles aren't going to change um, because we're not we're not changing the uh, actual gas itself we're just changing the conditions around it um, and our ideal gas is a constant therefore that doesn't change either so essentially what we can do is we can get rid of these from the equation and just form a brand new equation now there's two two different uh, styles to answer this now first off what we can do is we can just combine these two equations um, the first equation being that of the initial gas conditions and then we combine that with the second or the final gas condition so if I had to uh, write that down that would just simply be our P1 V1 over T remember exactly the same thing here um, we've just rearranged this and um, we've cancelled out the constants here and this is going to be equal to our P2 V2 over T2 okay so what you can do is you can have the constant um, these are going to equal out and you can solve whichever one we're looking for. Now, second way of doing this, depending on uh, how many marks are available for the question, they may require the second type, um, but essentially you should get the same answer each way, is we simply work out the moles of the gas. Uh, so let's rub that out quickly. The moles of the gas, right? Uh, let's put that R back in there. The moles of the gas. And then if we work out the moles of the gas um, for the new conditions, we can just simply chuck in the new conditions here because everything else will change apart from the moles and the ideal gas, as I mentioned. Um, so that's one way of doing it. It might be slightly easier to do it that way. Um, but as I said, both ways work. Um, just do a few practice questions, work out which you feel more comfortable with. Should be an equal amount of time, really. Now, let's say, for example, they actually kept another variable the same. So let's say the pressure was actually kept the same here. Um, all we switched up was the volume and the temperature. We could actually also remove this from the equation as well, in which case we can just simply remove it from here. So it would just simply be V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, and then you would just solve it like that, okay? Okay, so next up, percentages, all right? Percentage yield and percentage atom economy. Now, a lot of students I've chosen, they overlook these, um, they sort of forget they exist. Um, percentage yield, not so much. Normally they remember that one. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. But percentage atom economy can trip a few people up and they're like, oh, I don't remember what the equation is. So just remember these, easy peasy. So percentage yield then. Percentage yield is going to be our actual yield. All right. Divided by our theoretical yield. Okay. And then obviously because it's a percentage, times 100 chucked in there as well. Now our actual yield is going to be normally given to us as a, a set of data in the question. So for example, 4.26 grams or whatever it is. This is our actual yield. Our theoretical yield then is going to be the one that we calculated. So normally you do a first portion of the question where you calculate a theoretical yield based on the molar equations, the molar coefficients, etc., And then we use that in this equation to work out what our percentage yield is. Very easy, normally a two or three marker. Um, this is part of the year one topic, but they still test it, so it's good to know. Next up then is our percentage atom economy. All right, so this is simply going to be our mass our mass of the substance that we're looking at. So in a question, it may say, what is the percentage atom economy of the nitrogen gas produced or whatever it may be. So I'm just going to say mass of substance then or mass of product that we're concerned with. This will always be the product actually. So what I'm going to do quickly, so I uh, product, okay. So that's not all products. It's a very specific product that they are looking for. And this is going to be divided by the mass of all reactants okay so sigma reactant masses um now as always this is a percentage so i'm gonna have to oh just fits in there okay times it by 100 um because it's a percentage now it depends how you look at this question you don't actually have to understand what atom economy means um but you can look at it in terms of economy like finances a cost yield etc in terms of like i put this cost of, of reactants in and i get this back from it um, or you can view it as in like a fraction, so a proportion, rather than actual a money value here. But either way you look at it, the equation stays the same. It's not too important to understand. All right, last one then. I know it's been quite a long video, but hopefully you're still with me. It's going to be percentage uncertainties. So this is going to be a cheeky practical one. Uh, percentage uncertainty. 
Now, I always struggled with this back when I did my A-levels. Um, I just sort of neglected it really, but it does. it's rare, but it does pop up now and again, especially in paper three. Um, so this is going to be our plus or minus of our uncertainty here then. Uncertainty. This is going to be divided by our uh, measurements on the apparatus. So apparatus, apparatus measurement. Okay, and then we have to times up by 100 because we're dealing as always with percentage. So how do we know what our uncertainty is? Now this value, our uncertainty, will change depending on what apparatus we're concerned with. So let's give a few examples here just so I can uh, explain it. So it's all going to do with the sensitivity. So um, if we're using, for example, a burette, classic titration here, um, we're going to have start and end readings and an end point. So when you read off the meniscus in the burette, um, we're going to have a start point, an end point, um, and this is going to have a uncertainty of plus or minus 0.15 centimeters cubed. And this is just based on the scale that we have. So normally a burette is going to be 50 centimeters cubed, um, and this is our percentage uncertainty. Now next up, let's use an example of a pipette. Now pipettes, they can have all sorts of volumes here, so you have to be very careful. If we're using a 25 centimeters cubed pipette, then our percentage uncertainty is simply going to be plus or minus 0.1 centimeters cubed. All right, so one more example then, just use a, a balance, okay? So essentially a weighing scale. Um, this is going to give a percentage of uncertainty. Depending on which balance we're using now, some will give it to two decimal places, some will give it to three, some will give it to four. If you go into uni, make, make it lower and lower and lower, more DPs. Um, but in this case, let's use the example of a three decimal place one, okay? Um, depending on your school, your university, whatever it may be, um, this is going to be plus or minus 0 0.001 grams. Okay, that's because it's three decimal places. Let's do that 0 0.01. So whichever apparatus they're concerned with regarding our percentage uncertainty and which calculation we're carrying out, which experiment we're carrying out, uh, you just want to chuck these right in there, okay? Um, and then uh, do our apparatus measurements. So for example, let's say we were doing a, uh, a balance here. Now we would do our percentage uncertainty would simply be the plus or minus 0 0.001 grams if it's to three decimal places. And we divide that and let's say we took a measurement of 8.263 grams. You would do that times by 100 and you'd get your percentage uncertainty. Okay, so don't overlook this. It doesn't come up too often, but it's useful to know just in case. Um, this knowledge right here is going to come about just through practical exposure. Um, I always hated practicals in terms of the theory behind it. I didn't mind messing around in class, um, but the theory behind it, I always found it quite dry. So yeah, remember your apparatus, remember the, the, uh, the uncertainties that we have here, and you should be all good to go. So then, I wanted this to be a quick video, but um, amount of substance is the real mathsy topic, so it's gonna take up quite a bit of time to learn all these equations. Make sure you remember them. Apply these equations to calculation past paper questions. You don't need to write out flashcards or anything for these ones. It's not definitions, it's not color changes, anything like that. Just practice, practice is key, okay, for the math side of chemistry. Um, do your best, do all the past papers you have available, all the best in your upcoming exams. I'm gonna try and do my best to get out all of the equations you need for the entirety of physical chemistry. Like the video, it really helps the channel grow. Subscribe for future chemistry content. Peace.